Hi, this is Janet Wakelin with RemarkablyCreated.com. Today I'm bringing you a two-part My Digital Studio Monday video series that focuses on the My Digital Studio swatchbook templates. One of the first things that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to invest $19.95 in the My Digital Studio program. It's an absolutely amazing program that's going to make this digital templates available to you. It's going to make the design centers available to you. Of course, then you'll be able to use all of the My Digital Studio downloads as well as any and all available downloads that are on the marketplace. It does work with SVG files, JPEGs, .png, and of course your photo images and things like that. So it's not limited to just working with Stampin' Up! products. So the first step will be to invest your $19.95 and you can find that via my Shop Now button at RemarkablyCreated.com. So let's go ahead and let's jump in. For those of you that already have My Digital Studio on your computers and loaded, you're going to want to open the program and you do not need to be connected to the internet to work with My Digital Studio. So if you have it on your toolbar you want to click on it here if not just find it under your your programs and you're going to want to open it and when you open it you'll see new project options and you're going to want to click on photo books and come down here to swatch books and currently there are no photo only templates or designer templates that I have loaded but when they are available you would find des designer templates and those are ones that are pre-done for you that you can just simply um, use as is or use it as a starting base for you Photo only would be ones with photo boxes, but we're going to work with create your own. So let's click on that, and it's going to be slow and contrary today, and I'm sorry about that. My project 2, we'll click OK. And then you will see that it's going to populate the bottom row here with 26 pages. Swatchbooks are 26 pages long. You cannot make them longer. You don't have to use all 26 pages, but what will happen is that you will just get blank sheets on your ring. So I make it a point to always use 26, and I found really creative ways to do that, and you will see those in the finished projects. And other demonstrators have found really creative ways to use all 26 pages. But it does populate it with the 26 blank projects, and it really is 13 double-sided pages. When it comes up, let's start here first on one, you will see this gray box. This gray box is what's known as the bleed area, and it is an area where anything potentially could be cut off during the printing process. What I have found in swatchbooks, though, is it's pretty much true to size. You can almost really count on being um, getting everything to the edge because they are not physically binding this book. They are not putting a binding on any of the four sides. So it's pretty much um, safe to bet that you can get everything to the edge. But you still always want to be safe that there's not a really important element like a face or a really important part of a word or something in this gray area. You will also notice that there's a circle that's gray. This is where there is a hole for the ring. A swatch book is a sampler book that is on a ring with 13 heavyweight pieces of paper that have, it's kind of a cross between a matte and a glossy. It's got a really nice finish to it. And then it does have a frosted acetate piece on the top to protect the cover of the book. So you'll see this ring here. When I go to page two, you'll notice that the ring is on the opposite side because this is page one and page two are one sheet of paper. And so this is why you would see the ring on the right hand side. Let's go ahead now. Let's open some actual books so that you can get a better visual on what I'm talking about. And let's start first with one that is a landscape book that goes left to right. And we'll open that project. No, I don't want to save any changes. And this is a project that I did recently for the top 20 in my team. And you will see with the bleed area here, again, I don't have anything important in any of those areas that I'm too worried about being cut off. And then when I go to page two, you will notice that, again, that shifts to the right-hand side. Portrait, or excuse me, landscape I find the easiest to work with because I don't need to worry about top, bottom, left, right. You know, how are people viewing it when they open the book? they're simply going to see what I see here on the screen. And so I find landscape a little bit easier to work with, but you don't always want to work with landscape. Um, before I show you one, though, that is portrait, I do want to show you that all of the features that are available for designing are available here. In this case, since I did 20 of them, I really took advantage of the import from my projects. I created one book, and then I was able to simply, and we'll just use Sandy's book as an example, I was able to open up my second project, import all of the pages, and then just make some modifications. We'll import that at the end. Pick the page that I wanted to import, and then I had that easily um, added so that I could go ahead and do 20 
identical books with the cover just being different. So all of the features that are available for card making are available for swatch books, are available for tags, are available for photo books. And I love that our design center is extremely easy to work with. Um, it's very intuitive. It knows that when I click on a design element, the right design center opens up. I don't have to guess what it is that I'm working with. So there is a swatch book again that is a landscape version. Now let's go ahead and let's open up a portrait version. Let's open up this project. And this one actually will also give you another little tip about not using the whole thing. 26 different images. The, this landscape one here that has Sandy's picture on it, there's, 20, there's 13 pages and both sides of the 13 pages are all different creating one full swatch book. This next one won't be like that. I'll show you what I'm talking about and it'll make sense when you see part two especially. This one is what would be a portrait finish. This actually when it's printed then is designed to be held up and down like portrait and you will see here again the bleed area and the circle. When I'm creating I turn that bleed area off. I find it a little distracting. I look at it first kind of get an idea of where it's at then I create and then I put it back on just as a check. Some people leave it on all the time. It just depends. For me, it's a little distracting and I'm easily distracted. So I always turn it off when I'm creating. So there would be page one. Now here's a little bit more I talk about. You need to think a little bit when you're creating a landscape version. You can see here again, the, the hole has shifted to the right and this is the top of the card. Wherever the hole is, that's the top of the card. And so I wanted to make sure my words were facing this direction and not having what's new and hot over here and the words over here otherwise it would appear upside down and when I again when I do part two it will be more clear also if you look down here one two three four five six then starting at seven this project repeats itself that way I was able to get three of the little mini books that I was doing out of one and actually four excuse me I was able to get four projects out of one and then an extra little bookmark that I could use and this was a project that I created and these are little books that I give to my customers when they request a catalog from me telling them what's hot and new telling them about the in colors it does have a greeting card index on it and things like that so it's just something that I created for them but you can see that I was able to get four books from one project because I repeated it you can actually get 13 projects if you're doing 13 luggage tags 13 bookmarks you'll see a really cute Santa photo key project you'll see a really cute little um, photo project for cancer survivors in part two of our video now to to order these projects again the system is extremely intuitive you don't have to do anything um, but click and follow the buttons follow the bouncing ball here the only option you have is a photo book it recognizes what template you picked and so you'll click on that do you want to save changes I'm just gonna say no for right now because I've been monkeying around you'll enter your username or password if it's the first time you'll create a new account and then you'll log in and let's just go ahead and we'll do this real quick and we'll log in so that you can see the process of ordering it's actually fairly simple it can be added to order so it will take you into the um, hostess basket if you want hostess benefits you're just going to click no it'll tell you some stuff that you want to read you're going to select all the pages and you have to do that let me just clear all for just a second select pages pages associated select all if you don't have enough pages it will tell you and um, those little red things will pop up the project name and then the quantity that you want to order there's no minimum like five pages like you have with scrapbook pages or anything like that um, we do have um, some bulk discounts occasionally from time to time and um, you just put the quantity that you want you'll hit next you'll do this and then it will put it into the basket and then it will take you into the shopping process with Stampin' Up! very very easy to order so the swatch book template is there any of the elements the stamps the papers you're going to create on this swatch book within the boundaries just as you would a card a page a tag or any of the photo templates that we have so now let's go ahead and we will transition into part two so I'll see you in just a few minutes at my digital studio Monday swatch books part two see you in a few minutes take care God bless